Okay, everybody, welcome to another uh, edition of uh, Saw Blanc TV, and I am standing here with Stephen Kent Mirasu in the Livermore Valley, and Stephen is the owner winemaker for Stephen Kent Winery here in Livermore and La Rochelle Winery, and as we always do, we're talking about Sauve Blanc, and a little bit of disclosure, we see the beautiful fall-colored vines here, but we are secretly not standing in the Sauvignon Blanc vineyard, <laughs> but that, that's okay, we'll just pretend. We are. It is TV. It is yes. TV. It is the wonderful world of TV. Exactly. Stephen, thanks, man. I appreciate um, it. My pleasure. Thank you, Ryan. Awesome. So, Stephen, tell me a little bit about um, Gilmetti Vineyard, your Sauve Blanc program, what you're up to with the grape. Well, Sauvignon Blanc has been a, a longtime favorite of of me and the people who, who work at Stephen Kent Winery. Uh, and it's also been a longtime favorite of Livermore Valley, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But uh, Gilmetti Vineyard is a vineyard about three and a half miles east of where we're standing right now. And uh, it's planted to a couple different blocks of Sauvignon Blanc, a couple different clones of Sauvignon Blanc, and has, since 2005, I think, produced probably the best fruit you're going to get in the valley as far as Sauvignon Blanc is concerned. Uh, beautiful tropical fruit flavors, uh, a lot of uh, a wonderful acidity, some nice body in, in the wine as well, uh, a crisp, racy style of Sauvignon Blanc. I think something that's perfect for those people who like that real distinct, individualistic a aromatic profile of Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. like acid, you know, like the kind of foods that Sauvignon Blanc goes with. This is a perfect area and a perfect vineyard site for that variety. Excellent. So, um, w with your Sauvignon Blanc, Stephen, then what? Uh, how do you go about making it? What's your style? Your approach? I mean, you mentioned the flavor profile a bit, but maybe tell us a little bit about the production. Well, you know, I, I think that um, there are certain varieties that work extremely well with oak, and others that ought not to have oak as part of the process. Um, this is a little bit of a hybrid of that in, in a way. Um, normally, our Sauvignon Blanc blend will be a blend uh, of Sauvignon Blanc, predominantly two-thirds roughly, mm -hmm. and a third of Semillon. So that classic sort of white Bordeaux, um, dry blend. Both of those wines are stainless steel fermented. With the Sauvignon Blanc, though, what we've done the last couple of years is I've taken basically a barrel's worth, 59 gallons, 60 gallons, and put it in acacia wood. So it's a black locust tree. It's called acacia. has a very different aromatic and flavor profile than oak does. So while it's in wood, it's not an oak. So you don't get any of those oak notes that you might get from Chardonnay, for instance. Uh, and it tends to support the those real individual aromas and flavors that Sauvignon Blanc has um, without getting in the way of the fruit. It adds a really kind of neat sort of dried flower, dried floral kind of note, subtle note to the to the, to the the wine. Um, and, and I think that Sauvignon Blanc, in, at least in my opinion, is not a, not a wine that I like in oak. I, I just think that it's, you, you tend to tamp down the things that are most interesting about Sauvignon Blanc when you put it into, the, into oak. Absolutely, the aromatics and the flavors absolutely. and all that and run that. And, the, and it, that racy yeah. acidity, exactly. all those things. The, the portion that's in that's in acacia for us is only in the barrel for two. In fact, we've already taken it out for the 2013 vintage, so it was in wow. for 60 days maybe. Oh wow! It's okay. a very aromatically powerful barrel, and you don't want it to overshadow the fruit and and again the structure of the wine. So it's just a real gr subtle grace note to the wine, but I think it adds a really interesting effect to it. Excellent. Well, and, and you mentioned, um, since we're on the subject of the 2013 harvest, mm -hmm. and it's one of our favorite subjects these days yes. because it looks like such a great harvest. Absolutely. But uh, same feeling here, Gilmetti Vineyard, your vineyard looks great with it. And, yeah. Spectacular. All over Livermore. Um, mm -hmm. You talk to, to the Nottingham folks, and, and Colin is over the moon as far as the quality is concerned. I think it's our finest Bordeaux variety harvest which would include Sauvignon Blanc on the white side. Uh, I think it just, we, we got volumes that were above average and quality way, way above average. So I'm extremely excited about where we're going to be Sauvignon Blanc wise with Lola in, which is our Sauvignon Blanc blend, mm -hmm. Lola, uh, in February or March when it's released. Uh, and then two years from now, two and a half years from now, when, when the, the, the Bordeaux already start being released, we're going to have stupendous wines, I think. Excellent. Well, and Stephen, do me a favor, and you, well, you mentioned this, the Lola is your blend of Sauvignon Blanc, primarily Sauvignon Blanc, uh, and Semillon occasionally. Uh, and I know that the 2012 is sold out because it was very popular, so right. you mentioned the 2013 will be out, you said March, is that yes, right? Yes, uh, late winter. Okay, yeah. excellent, great. Yeah. Um, you're here in the Livermore Valley, as we noted. Can you tell people um, where to find the winery and a uh, website and all that good stuff so they can come see you? Absolutely. Livermore is one of those amazing places that not too many people have heard about, or not enough people have heard about, in my opinion. Um, one of the oldest wine growing regions in the state, first commercial growing area. In fact, the first international gold medal ever won by a California winery 
in uh, in Paris mm-hmm. in the Paris Exposition was a Sauvignon Blanc Semillon blend from Cresta Blanc Winery Livermore. 1889. <laughs> um, so there's a long history with the variety here, uh, the varieties here, uh, and we. Um, uh, you know, kind of given my family's lineage in the business, six generations, oldest winemaking family in, in the U.S., we like hearkening back when it's appropriate to history. And I think with these two varieties, it makes a lot of sense to, to you know, to make a dry sort of white Bordeaux style wine. Uh, under normal circumstances, when the wine's available, you can get it in our tasting room. We're on Tesla Road uh, between Concannon and Winty. We're open every day. Uh, from 12 to 4.30, and uh, we're just 45 minutes from every population center in, in the Bay Area, from San Francisco to San Jose to Oakland, all within you know less than an hour drive up to Livermore. 52 wineries here in the Valley, a spectacular place to spend a weekend, a lot Absolutely. of great things happening up here. Great, and the website? StephenKent.com. Easy to navigate. That, a lot of <laughs> lot of information. Easy we try to, to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> right. uh, easy to navigate. Easy to get to our store if someone wants to take some wine home with them or get some wine shipped to them. And uh, a lot of information about the wines and about the vineyards we use that sort of thing on the site as well. Excellent, Stephen. Thanks uh, again. As we've noted here, um, Sauvignon Blanc's a heritage grape in Livermore. It's an important grape in Stephen's program. Thanks for having me out, Stephen. I appreciate Absolutely. it, man. Cheers. Cheers. Good Thank to you see very you. Much. Good to see you too. Likewise. Thanks.